Hey, we're back. Oh my hey. God. Hey, welcome back to uh, Metal Hedge Journey. Uh, hey, so this week we are continuing our journey down the top 50 metal albums of all time. Uh, this is the number 23 record, I believe, of all time. This little band called Death. Yep. The album is called Human. And uh, hey, man, funny story. This is our, actually the first band we've had so far to show up on this list three times. Crazy. Yep. Not a, not a band I thought would show up three times. Hey, but I think they've shown up. But I'm getting ahead of I myself. I don't mean that. Uh, I don't mean that negatively. Uh, I've been pleasantly surprised with the uh, with the other two albums. And uh, look, not to jump too far ahead here on scores, but uh, it's going to get a good score. So this was a, this is another good uh, showing by Death here. So uh, hopefully you've been following along with us here on the Metal Hedge journey. We came over from another channel we used to have called Three Guys in a Mic. Dave is going to link that uh, down below. So if you want to go back and see some of the other metal content we've done in the past, you can see it there. Um, but going forward, we'll be doing all the music on this channel. So we'll uh, go ahead and do a quick uh, quick history of the band, and then we'll get right into this review here. So we have the band Death. This is the album Human. Death, uh, formed in 1984 by guitarist and vocalist Chuck Schuldner, was an American death metal band from Florida. Uh, death is considered to be among the most influential bands in heavy metal music and a pioneering force in death metal. Uh, death did have a bit of a revolving lineup with Chuck being the only consistent member throughout the years. Um, I don't think I had this last time, but I, I, I actually have found this figure finally. Death has sold over 2 million records, um, making them one of the best-selling death metal bands, only surpassed by one band, Cannibal Corpse. That makes sense. I mean, yeah. to be fair... You know, I think Chuck passed away when he was 34, so you know he didn't get a lot of opportunity to <laughs> claim the throne there, to keep selling, to keep making records. I think that's a good point, Dave. I think had he stayed alive, and if they if they would have kept making death records, right? Which I think that was that might have been up in the air a little bit, but had they kept making records, I think they would have probably been the best selling act. Um, the the album we're talking about tonight, Human, was released in 1991, and it's the band's fourth studio album. Uh, this album marked the beginning of a major stylistic change for Death, being more technically complex and progressive than the band's previous efforts. Uh, this new style would continue to evolve on all the following albums. The lineup for this album features Chuck Shoulder on guitars and vocals, Paul Masvidal on guitars, Steve DiGiorgio on bass, and Sean Reinert on drums. The band, uh, there's not really a single release from the album, but the band did make a music video for the song Lack of Comprehension. And hey... If you do like that song, uh, or if you're interested in that song, go back and check out a couple of videos ago. We did do a reaction to that uh, to that song last week on the channel here. So, good song for sure. So, that's a little bit of the history of the band. So, uh, this is a little bit of a new format for us. We're going to hit what we call the the metal rundown here, where we're going to talk about some different categories. So, let's go ahead and start with musicality. So, uh, I'll go first here. So. What I have here is that I feel like the guitar work overall is the highlight of the record. Uh, the back and forth solos between Shouldner and Masvidal, or Masvidal, apologies, throughout the album, they strike that balance between being really shreddy, uh, shreddy, not not shitty, uh, while yeah. also conveying emotion. Right? I feel like these solos have emotion when they're written. They're not just random, you know, random notes yeah. on the fretboard. Uh, the rhythm section, again, uh, between Steve DiGiorgio and S Sean Reinhardt are not outdone either. Uh, specifically in the remixes, uh, this album was remixed in 2011, uh, which is much improved. The bass, uh, much more prominent in the mix, uh, which really allows Steve DiGiorgio to shine. And, uh, yeah, specifically calling out the bass intro in lack of comprehension. So, Adrian, yeah. what do you think? I mean, you know... We, I've only gotten to hear a few death records so far, uh, this being the third one now, obviously. But, you know, you and Dave are, are big death fans. Like, what do you think of this of this kind of guitar pairing between Shoulder and Masvidal? Does this show up differently for you than other records? Does this stand above? So, <clears throat> I will say that as far as their uh, their dueling solos go, I think they fucking go together fucking awesomely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate I that I don't think that the two guys uh, got ultimately got along. They did not. Uh, believe it or not, uh, there's a, a diss track on Death's next album towards Paul Masvidal. Uh, What's the song's called The Philosopher. Uh, uh, yeah. So, but it, it, either way, I think they go great together. It sucks they couldn't do more. 
Yeah. It, um, go ahead. Uh, well, I was going to say, as far as riffs go, I mean, y'all can hear it in, in all the shit y'all have heard me write, uh, guys. Wow. This I am so influenced by this album. Uh, you know, I, I'll never be able to play like this, but fuck, it, it influences pretty much most of the riffs that I've ever fucking written. And uh, yeah, I just, I absolutely love this album. It, you know, I don't consider it Death's best album, but look, spoiler alert, I consider it my favorite Death album. Um, in fact, let me go ahead and say, guys, for those of y'all who don't know, the four of us were once in a band and we were called I Human. The human part, the namesake of that is from this motherfucking album right here. There you go. Just so yeah, you and, know. Yeah, and by the way, we had this we had this one song that was called Remnants of Time. Um and, and as I'm listening to this uh this song called Flattening of Emotions, I'm like Did did Chuck <laughs> did Chuck rip us off? Or Ooh. did we totally rip that off? Because that uh certainly comes up in the uh in the little chorus riff on uh, Remnants of Time. <laughs> but uh hey, not to, not to stray too far here. Uh, yeah. look, musicality, I mean, Jason, nope. you know, yeah, I'm sorry, Adrian, but we'll come back to you. Jason, just talking about, you know, some of the bass work on this album. Did you pick out anything you really like from Steve DiGiorgio? Uh, I would say that, that this is more like the underlying, the riffs, uh, this gives more power to uh, the flow of the songs. Uh, there are pieces in different songs where he gets off on his own. Uh, yeah, he, he shows up. Moment. He shows up a couple of times where he's like he's different than the music, and it's it's a cool. Yeah. It's it's fun to hear. It's, it's, it's uh, like I said, but for the most part, it's the it's the power behind uh, the the actual song itself. Uh, so I mean, it, it's solid. We're solid. Yeah, you know, th I think the thing musicality wise that stuck out for me was. I mean, you know, Dave already referenced some of the guitar work. I know Adrian's going to go back and talk about guitars too, but I, I really like the transitions that Death does, man. I mean, because they're not like, you know, like other other. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to say polished bands because it makes Death sound bad, but man, I mean, they are all about breakneck transitions, and it's just it doesn't it doesn't come. It, there's no build up to it. It just kind of comes out of nowhere and it transitions super fast. But it makes um, sense though, doesn't it? Yeah, no, it yeah. does. Like, I don't find myself ever like looking <laughs> at or like listening to it and thinking like, "Fuck!" Like, listen, full transparency. Okay, this is gonna hurt me to say this, but there's a, there's a little song out there called "Saint Anger" uh, from the greatest metal band in the history of time, and the transition that they do into the little clean riff where he starts singing uh, the verse riff uh, at the start yeah. of "Saint Anger," that transition, it's mid. Maybe maybe, they, maybe, it, maybe it could have been better. Um, but I don't really feel that way about death here. And I would say secret face is a song that kind of, I think really exemplifies their ability to change riff and change tempos like on a dime. I think like if I was going to show somebody that example, I would show them secret face. I think that's a, a great example of that. Uh, on my notes, I have on secret <clears throat> face, good changeovers. Yeah. 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 Adrian, do you have anything else you want to add? You know, uh, when I first jammed this album, fuck, I'd probably say it was 2004 or five. Um, to me, it was the drummer that stood out um, the most. And his name's Sean Reinhardt, and him and Paul Masvidal would go on to create another band called Cynic. Villa Maya. Oh, Cynic. Oh, mm -hmm. Cynic. They had a, yeah, they had a song called Villa Maya. I'm sorry. It was Cynic. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, anyway, uh, they're cool, I guess. If you're into human, you may like uh you may want to go check them out um but yeah I, I thought the drum the drummer fucking showed up there the the double bass in this fucking album is relentless Dude. yeah yeah uh, I, I had a note in there because I, I the note i i put was like i very rarely do i like notice not notice drums but i don't like i don't really like recognize like supreme drumming right i just listen to guitars a lot of times and do the drummer stood out instantly yeah. uh sean reiner on this one it was it was really good. Very clean. Very technical. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, um, I recognize Steve DiGiorgio as one of the best bass, bass players in the game. And he doesn't, you know, I, I just kind of wish he was showcased a little bit better in this album. It's my one gripe that I have. Uh, though, when he does show up, he, he shows up. Yeah. Well, so, uh, he shows up in the next album. Uh, oh, yeah. We'll, 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 um, we'll get there. Um, anyway, yeah. uh, obviously, guitars, very influential to me as a musician. Uh, as a guitarist, and uh, yeah, I just think this is to me this is uh, this is death metal personified. 
And it sucks that this is the first true death metal album I ever heard because it's only downhill from here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, ru- it ruined the rest of it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Jason, do you have any other notes you wanted to hit? Uh, no. I mean, I, we, I think we've hit it all. All right. Hey, uh, entertainment value. <clears throat> Look, I'll, I'll go first on this one because I, uh, I took a big, fat, steamy Cleveland steamer on a tool's chest in the last review that we did. And listen, one of the problems <clears throat> with that album, and there were many, but one of the problems was absolutely the length and lack of diversity of music on the album. And so, like, I don't think Death could have had a better uh, predecessor on this list than that. Because this album comes in at a cool 33 minutes and 51 seconds. Dude, I can listen to the whole eight album. Songs. <clears throat> yeah, eight songs. I can listen to the whole album plus some on my way to work. I can listen to another half of it on my way to work. Um <laughs> Dude, and the album is just exciting, man. It, it's it's full of moments that are, you know. Adrian said something whenever we did the first Megadeth review, where he said when he when he heard Last Rites, "Love You to Death," like it made him want to pick up his guitar and start playing. Like it it actually gave him like a little bit of motivation to do that. Like, dude, that's how I feel. Like listening to this, like it makes me miss playing guitar uh, with you guys in particular, but. It just really nice. makes me. It really made me want to pick up the guitar and start playing. So entertainment value, super high for me. I don't, you know, we don't really have a rating for that, but it, it's high. Yeah, uh, Adrian, you kind of you, you kind of stole my my words right out of my mouth here, and I completely agree with you. I, I I have here that Human is the perfect pure death metal album. Uh, while this isn't this isn't my favorite death record. Uh, I think it's the best pure death metal record that exists. Like the other albums we reviewed, Symbolic and Sound of Perseverance, those are more like progressive death. Um, and but I think this is a pure death metal record. And and I agree. Comparing, <laughs> we heard this so early in our death metal journey that uh, it just makes every other death metal record I listen to just pale in comparison. So. Uh, yeah. This maintains the heavy aggression and raw energy that exemplifies like what a death metal record is supposed to be, but it doesn't skimp on the melody that like allows songs to breathe. Right? It's not just aggressive. It is this album is heavily aggressive, but it like there's still melodic elements sprinkled in, and the solos have yeah. like actually make you feel something. Um, unlo- it's not. It's not. It's not one note like at the gates. Correct or morbid angel, <laughs> where it's yeah. just one note the whole time. Like we go zero to a hundred, right? This has, this has depth to it. So yeah, that's that's where I'm at yeah. on entertainment value. I'm I'm not shitting on at the gates. We like that record, but you know that was very one note. This is this a little bit all over the place. Fossil, what was your? Uh, did, did you did you gain some entertainment from this? I, I fear you didn't. Uh, I'll just read from my notes. Uh, All right. I did not get much, if any, value from entertainment from this. Uh, and look, I get it. Uh, as far as the style, it's not my thing. But while I also say that, I can also acknowledge why people uh, like it. It's just not my cup of tea. Like, I can listen to all three of you talk about everything that you like and understand that why you like it. For me, like, uh, just an example, like the drums. Highlight of the album, in my opinion. It's so heavy on the double bass that for me, as somebody who's not into this music, each song starts to sound the same. Uh, And and you can have a million changes. There's some great uh, sections in there where where they slow it down, speed it up, slow it down, bring it back, you know, and then just go into overdrive. And I and I like all that. Uh, but when you layer the vocals, which are part of it, uh, like I just can't get into the vocals at all. Like I, I, I can't sing anything that's in this any of these songs. Sure, so, you can. I, I guarantee you would sound better singing this than you would like you know anything that maybe. actually has real vocal ability. Maybe, uh, maybe. Come on. But hey, hey, Fossil, dude, we're gonna we're gonna break you down one song at a time, bro. By the end of this journey, you're gonna love you some death metal. All right. Give <laughs> <sighs> me some venom. Can I just get venom back? Oh, they no, have another no, album they're... on this? Uh, no, they, they they only made one album and they quit. Hey, uh, so we're going to move on here to the T. That's going to be top tracks. Did what it, happened? Oh, oh, inter- I missed. Entertainment uh, value right here. Yeah, I was going to say, Adrian didn't, Adrian didn't go, man. Well, look here. Let me run through this right quick. Look, 
guys. This is everything I want and expect out of a metal album when I put in and listen to a metal album. It's short, sweet, fucking balls to the wall uh, from beginning to end. There are no fucking skippers. Entertainment value is, what did Josh say, top shelf? Hi. 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 (laughs) All right. All right, my bad. Uh, you good? I was just I was just picking up on your entertainment from your uh, just from your face, man. Fair hey, enough. so we're gonna move on to the T here in metal. That's gonna be top tracks. Uh, here we'll talk about our top three tracks in order, as uh, you know, as we are supposed to do, and uh, any low lights that you may have. Hey, Fossil, why don't you hit us with your uh, top three first, and any low lights you may right. have? Uh, top three in uh, reverse order. So number three, Secret Face. Number two. A uh, lack of uh, comprehension, and number one, uh, see through dreams. Uh, I didn't have like again. Nice. And I know, I know I was negative on the entertainment side of it. Don't have large low lights. Like there's nothing on here that just was putrid or sucked. Like I can give enough credit to recommend on every song, or as far as the musician side. Uh, so the only songs that I really didn't get into be uh, together as one and mm. this one the, is the only instrumental cosmic c and it's only because i felt like me in my case it was a missed opportunity to have a instrumental that i just uh i just couldn't get into and it was it wasn't really until the 235 mark where the bass comes in he has a part oh, yeah. all of his own it's really really good but it's only like 15 seconds long yeah, <clears throat> that is a good showcase for uh, uh, Steve and Giorgio. I, I respect yeah. that. Yeah, here let me uh, let me give mine, and then I'll let the the two twenty plus year uh, death fans go. Uh, for me, uh, I have one low light on the album, Jason. It is Cosmic C. Uh, instrumental music is for the weak, and uh, this is no <laughs> this is no exception. It's weak. Uh, other than that, though. The rest of the album is fantastic. Number three for me, uh, Vacant Planets. Uh, number two, See Through Dreams. And look, I don't, I don't want to just pick the low hanging fruit here, but Lack of Comprehension, fucking fucks. Okay, that's a good song. It's sucking. Yeah, that is a yeah. great one. I'll, I'll pop in. Uh, yeah, go for Dave it. Go right for quick. it. Uh, it's, it's funny because mine and Jason's is pretty much almost the same, except uh, a little different here. Uh, number three is uh, See Through Dreams fucking awesome song i love I the solo in that in that song and i love that it's it's not even really a hard solo to play it's just it just fucking fits it works it feels right where it is yeah. Yeah, anyway number two secret face um and number one of course lack of comprehension all right yeah adrian i did have secret face as an honorable mention i, I thought that was a really good song as well that would have been my number four if we'd have done I'll, it I'll, I'll say this one thing about the my favorite song to see through dreams i have it on here it's the one song in which style of vocals really goes with the style of either the riffs or the way that they're playing their instruments right on yeah so i have my number three is flattening of emotions um great song great opener uh number two is lack of comprehension and I'm surprised nobody had my number one at least somewhere on their list. Uh, I have Suicide Machine. I fucking love that song. Uh, my look, Dave. I could have all these at number one, uh, even the instrumental. I mean, look, so, I, I I understand that is, that like this is like picking from your favorite children here, but like, dude, I just love the 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 chord. Like, suicide Machine. I don't know. I love that song. Anyway, uh, yeah, that would be like the seventh best song on the record, Dave. You're stupid. Mm. All right, What's my fourth song. It's my fourth favorite song. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's a good song. All right, uh, moving on here. We're going on to the A in metal. We're talking about audio production. What's the production value on this record? Um, Look, I wouldn't tell a soul to listen to the original cut. No. Like, ever. E- even you guys, it's like, hey, listen to the remix. And it's not just like a re- re-release or whatever. They actually remixed it. Uh, I guess they refer to it as reissues. So, mm, okay. Um, so it's you know it's mixed differently and it just sounds so much fucking better. Yeah, um, my, I haven't my, heard the original and I mean I thought this this sounded like it's contemporaries like coming out in that same time frame like not as good as the Black Album obviously but I mean sure you know as other metal coming out then like I th- I thought it was at least on the same page. Yeah, 
Gotcha. Right on. So in the original I mix, I didn't have any issues. yeah, in the original <laughs> mix that that Adrian and I and I would have heard way back when, like pre two thousand eleven, like the bass is nearly inaudible in the whole album. Um, yeah, it, it just. Not that sounds like my kind of mix. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's it, they got they get they got that oh, yeah. injustice for all treatment. Uh, no, it, they didn't get really big. Well, it's it's just really flat, right? Uh, there was a flattening of Dang. emotions. So, um, oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> you know, and I would say that the original mix also kind of sounded like this last Morbid Angel album we listened to, where it's kind of just like a sometimes it's just like a wall of noise. Yes. Whereas absolutely. in this reissue, you can hear every single fucking note, the guitar, sometimes yes. not the bass, but the, the guitar plays. So, so. so what year the reissue was in in 11? Yeah. 20, 2011. Yeah. So, so you guys years, were already fans years. of death. Yeah. Like when, let's like say, in 2004? Well, yeah. In high school. Let's say, two, yeah. 2004. We'll call so it. So for you guys, so that's pretty cool. So you guys got to hear the initial album and then kind of get the, revelation of like oh this is really what it was supposed to sound like yes yeah yeah how, so, so how was that the first time you heard it uh like imagine if if metallica re-released injustice for all like and did it justice when they which they totally can uh, uh i i don't understand what you're saying uh which, let me let me help you out josh it's like listening to the original cut of of uh killing is my business and then going on to the final kill like oh. there's there's no now comparison man now i yeah. get it yeah okay yeah. Uh, it, I, okay, so a, a real answer, Josh. This record before the remix was not one of my favorite death records because the original mm-hmm. remix is, is very like it, it. It hurt it. The the original cut, I should say. Um, but since the well, remix, we wrote all our shit in 08, so you know it was mine. Yeah, but but <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> but, but since since the remix, uh, it's it's now easily one of my favorite death records. So cool, um, nice, Jason. You said no issues. You liked it? Oh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I've never heard the original, so it's it is what it is. I haven't either, I dude. I don't I don't know what happened there, Fossil, but you came in. Fucking screaming for vengeance there, bro. It was good. Oh. Uh, all right. Hey, moving on to the last part here. Uh, this is going to be Legacy. So with Legacy, we're just going to talk about, like, you know, what does this album kind of mean to you? And we're going to give our uh, patent pending metal rating uh, for the album here. Oh, um, uh, yeah. I'm going to, I'm gonna again, I'm going to hold the two fanboys uh, till the end. So, Fossil, uh, why don't you go ahead and go first and give us that terrible rating years. Uh, I, it's not a terrible rating. I gave it a, uh, let's see. Uh, it's, it's the same score as the last record. It's, I think it was 6.2. Okay. Okay, Fossil. All right. I'm telling you. Yeah. Dude, I am I telling you, we are breaking this motherfucker down one song at a time, dude. <laughs> By the end of this year, he's going to have, yeah. like, kind of long hair. Yeah. Uh, just in the front. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, he's going to be fucking playing a fucking guitar. I mean, it's, it's going to be good, man. Fretless uh, bass. Exactly. But I, again, you music side of this album is is very good. Uh, it's just the the vocals and the singing style that I just I cannot get into. Uh, and so, uh, it, again, like I said, as far as a legacy for me, uh, it's a solid mm-hmm. album. Uh, I probably won't jam it again, though. Uh, I, okay. Going forward, I probably won't again. I wouldn't listen to Death on my own. Uh, but I can see exactly why this is considered a top 50 metal album of all time. Absolutely. Well, hell yeah. Well, question for you, Jason, if you remember. And this also for you, too, Josh. What you mentioned is the vocals kind of being... Uh, or, Josh, you mentioned this on the on the lack of comprehension reaction that you've noticed the vocals have been different with each album. And Jason, it seems like the vocals have been something you've hated each album. So it's know, just, style, I guess if you though. got to pick, if you got to pick your favorite version of Chuck Schuldiner's vocals, which I believe you called sound, of, um, sorry, the sound of perseverance, you called them you Gollum, say sound like Gollum, Gollum. Yep. Uh, which he was very high pitched. And then yep. symbolic it's, he's kind of between that and this, yep. And then human were here with the very low pitch growl. Uh, I, I, I mean, like I like the last one better. Okay, I like 
I like the music on this one better. So they oh, ended right up on. the same. So that's why they kind of ended up with the same score. Mm. And like okay. I, I didn't, I didn't know what the last one was until I had actually I had asked Dave earlier about it, but I had already given my score, and I was like, oh nice. Oh, okay, well, it's about the same then. So it, it just worked out that way. About you, Josh? Yeah, yeah vocally, I, I think I prefer Sound of Perseverance. That's also like of the three albums. That we're doing, like I'll use this opportunity to to go unless Jason had anything else he wanted to cover there. Good. Um, I I think Sound of Perseverance is my favorite of the three records that we've done here, musically and vocally. Like I think for me, I don't know if it's just like maybe it's the first one that we did, so I have this this attachment to it or something. But I think for me, like it all comes together. I know that's their last record too, so I mean that's that's seven records of kind of putting it together, right? But yeah. I think I I like that one the best. I like Human the second best of the three that we've done here. I'm gonna come in with a seven point six. Um hey. dude, I, I think it's a I think it's just a great fucking album. Um again, you know, look maybe in another in another time when it wasn't following tool, maybe I don't like it as much. I don't know. But I mean this was just like the 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 breath of fresh air that I needed uh oh. coming after that. And dude, I think it's a monster record and I you know, I this is definitely gonna not to step on uh, Dave later on, but it's going to push me down and and listen to the other Death albums for sure. Nice, <clears throat> Adrian. You want you want you want to go, or you want me to go? Sure, I'll go ahead and go. Okay. Um. So look. Uh, so first off, let me go ahead and throw a shout out to Individual Thought Patterns. That's the album that that precedes this one, and it is before Symbolic. Uh, great fucking album. Didn't make the cut, unfortunately. Um. But yeah, check that out if you liked Human. Uh, Legacy, look, uh, again, this is my favorite Death album. Uh, and I do think that from this point on, I mean, honestly, Human Just Itself is a mixture of Death and their first three albums, and then Death and, with their last three. And Human's right in the middle with the sound, with everything. I mean, it's the transition album, right? The perfect amount of death metal mixed with uh, uh, all those melodic elements. And and of course all the you know progressive metal elements as well um yeah man it's the shit and it's still every time i put it in you know those 30 minutes go by like fucking nothing i love this album it's the shit it's gonna 9.6 from me all right that's robust that is uh just for everyone keep it score so we consider five to be average anything five or greater is something we would recommend so you know just yeah so just just for comparison's sake so if jason gives something you know he like he gave this record a 6.2 that is still a recommendation so uh just you know i know a lot of people think like seven is average but not for us so five is average for us um so before i give my score uh just overall you know adrian and i think think alike when it comes to death like we both grew up with it so um I, I do think this album was a turning point um, for death and for death metal. And I think this album, has, you know, kind of elaborating on what Adrian said, this album is kind of dead center in in death's career, right? So you have like the post-human era, which is their more progressive elements uh, in play. And then you have the pre-human era, which is their more pure death metal sound. So a lot of the, the hardcore death metal purists they really appreciate the early death records uh, up to the human or lyrics and yeah. all that shit yeah but there's one thing in common with both groups they both like human right yeah. so um human is like the uh it, it is it is the middle ground where both of those groups meet and acknowledge that it is a fantastic record um i am coming in uh at a 9.4 uh, I think this record is, yeah, I think this is one of the best metal records of all time. Uh, that gives Agreed. us an average of 8.2, which if on our scale is considered an A tier record, uh, a relatively high A tier at that. So a uh, final nice. thing here, gents, before we, uh, move along, um, Adrian, does this belong on the list? Yes. Okay. Josh. Yes. Uh, I'm going to come in at a yes. Jason? I already said yes. Okay, sorry. Didn't hear you. Um, Adrian, I know you'll listen to more. Uh, yep. Josh, will you listen to more death? 
Yeah, I already said that. Okay, my bad. Uh, I'm going to... Jason, what about you? I already, I already said no, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Jesus All right. Hey, hey, so where does uh, so where does this album rank against the other two death records that we did already? So this actually is... These co- are the- this these are the only three, right? Yeah, these are the only yeah. three. Um, yeah. So symbolic got an eight. God. Symbolic got an eight point one, um, and sound of perseverance got an eight. So this is the definitive death record. Oddly enough, <laughs> we have it in the same order that it's on the list. So the list is accurate, I guess. Oh. I guess. I guess that's fair. Well, look. Uh, yes, sir, fortunately, we are. Yeah. Fortunately, we got a great album there. Hey, even more fortunate, we have another album coming up that's uh, it's gonna be really good. So the next album that we're doing on the list is gonna be the album Heaven and Hell from Black Sabbath. Uh, so that'll be coming up in a future video. Uh, if you like everything we did here today, please give us a like, give us a subscribe. We're gonna be putting out all kinds of new metal content every week uh, going forward here. So hopefully you like it. Check us out. Stick around. Live long and prosper. Take it easy, everybody. Later.